We are here today to film a leg day. This is two to three reps in reserve because I may be doing a little something something. Yeah, I'm gonna drop drop into a couple of shows. So that's why we're not going full blown, blown failure because we don't want to destroy the legs and destroy the visuals. So I'll take you through the typical leg day. It's not gonna be the full blown fuckery that I normally do, but you'll still get an idea of what we're doing on a typical leg day. Uh, energy has been down a lot. I decided to do this six weeks ago. I was 110.2 kg. Today, I was 99.5. It has been rough, but I decided, so we went in on it. And if you wanna get something done, then do whatever you gotta to do to make it happen. Um, Holding off, cracking open this monster because energy has been low. So I'm going to crack this open now, start getting this down me, and then get into this leg day. Uh, oh. Oh. Good shit, let's go. First exercise, lion hamstring curl. I'm just warming up on this right now. Typically the first exercise after doing some cardiovascular, which obviously warms up body temperature, gets heart rate up, some mobility work. So we haven't got any tightnesses or restrictions before we start. Typically the first exercise we will use more warm-up sets. So I'm going to do three warm-up sets before doing two working sets on this line of hamstring curl. So you can see with see the way I'm performing the exercise, and this is across all muscle groups, all exercises. We want to try, try and get maximum stimulus. That's a combination of maximum load while being able to maintain good form, tempo, and control over the weight and full ranges of motion. If your load progression takes away from any of those other factors, then you're taking away from the optimal stimulus for muscle growth we're trying to get out of that exercise. If you want to be a power lifter or a strong man and move weight from A to B, then you can get other structures involved, other muscles involved, tendons, ligaments, joints, it doesn't matter. But if you want to maximize your physique progression, then you want to create the ultimate stimulus, bearing in mind those factors that I have just said. Exercise number two, seated hamstring curl. So two hamstring exercises to start this leg day. Nobody ever had too much hamstring. There's no damage in doing two exercises in a row on a leg day. People always end up with, most of the time, dominant quads, or maybe they don't have any quads, but Nobody ends up stewing with like ridiculous hamstrings and no quads. So I've got stronger quads. So we do two hamstring exercises. It's because of the two hamstring exercises, I'll do a like top set, back off set, top set, back off set. I don't want to do three sets on that, three sets on this. Mentally, that just won't induce me to want to push the sets very far. 
under normal circumstances. I know I'm doing reps in reserve today, but that's typically how I've been setting up these leg days. So seated ham, again, top set, back off set, light the lying hamstring curl. Shouldn't need as many warm up sets because we're already warm. So one to two warm up sets, and then we're going in. Time to work. I can't have it on double digits. It's got to be on triple. Normally I'd stack this. Everyone's going to say that, but normally I would, but I don't want to fry myself today and I've not been on this in a while, so I might have dropped a little bit of strength through the aggressive diet that I've been doing. I started literally six weeks ago, I was on over 4,000 calories and dropped it to 2,200 overnight. Um, yeah, and it's, it's down on 1,800 at the moment, so feeling the pink. <laughs> oh, wow. Third exercise in Smith Machine Squat. This particular Smith Machine is very nice. Atlantis Smith Machine at Shred's Gym is the one. It's very smooth. Some Smith machines can be like a bit stickier and the transfer of weight to the musculature that you're trying to train, it doesn't feel so good, but the sensation on this machine is incredible. It moves really well. You get a lot of value out of doing a Smith squat on this machine. Today, I'm not doing it with a ramp. You can use a ramp to try and hit more quad, but this is all over leg I'm trying to do today. Yeah, just remembering not to get too carried away and destroy myself, even though I want to. We're getting the knee sleeves on the go. For me personally, it's more about keeping warmth around the joint. There's a compression element, so as you are coming down in a compound press like a a squat variation or a leg press. This is compressing the knee sleeve and giving you that small bit of assistance. When you're getting into the harder parameters of the lift, so it's not to take away, it's just to offer a bit of support. It's not so harsh in those uh, deeper sort of ranges of the motion. This is a, a longevity standpoint for me. Um, so don't wait until you've got bad knees or anything like that, start using them early on, even if it's single ply. So there's different levels of thickness and compression that they offer. There's single ply, double ply and triple ply. So the single ply really, they won't offer a lot of compression, but they will keep warmth in the joint. I've got double ply ones here. So we're in that sort of middle ground of like the warmth and the compression element. So they're a real sort of key thing that can help but they're not to mask bad knees or anything like that. If you've got messed up knees, then get to the root of the issue, get some sports therapy, figure out what's going on with that. This uh, wraps and knee sleeves, they're not to cover anything up, especially if people are using squat variations to aggravate their knees. Like a key example is a Cybex hack squat. Incredible for quad development, but very harsh on the knees. I would not touch that machine with a barge pole. I've tried to use it. It just destroys my knees. And then for weeks later, my knees are in a bad place and I can't train legs properly. So 
There's no point using a machine, no matter how good it is, if it's going to destroy your meats. Pick variations that you can take far without destroying your joints, ligaments, tendons, because at that point, you can't train anyway. Fuck it out. Even these weights are getting heavy. <laughs> oh, you know you're dieting when carrying the plates are heavy. Let's go then. Yeah. Hmm. Even reps in reserve is hard. Oh. Ooh. So, here we are on the fourth exercise, like a pivot leg press. I like to vary the style of the squat and the leg press variation. So, the sniff squat is sort of on a fixed alignment sled kind of thing, say like a leg press or a hack squat. But with this leg press, it's converging and moving throughout the movement. So. It's hitting the leg musculature in a slightly different way. You can go on a Smith and a leg press that are both on sleds. I just like to vary the way that the muscle is hit within a session. So, and it's really comfortable on sort of like hips, knees, this movement. So that's a good reason to vary it as well. Okay, introduce this as a fifth exercise now. So, prime leg extension. We're just loading all on the middle peg. We're not messing around with loading at different points. It's just gonna be the most consistent sort of uh, resistance throughout the movement, just loading it all on the middle peg. Three sets on this, higher rep ranges, 15 to 20, to really polish off the quads after doing the Smith squats and the leg press. Oh. 
I keep on nearly forgetting about the reps and reserve. I just get too carried away. I just want to demolish it. Oh, not too bad. Fuck off that book. Fucking one set of stairs. <laughs> I've done quads. That's a working exercise, those stairs are. Jesus, okay, here we go. Exercise number six. Donkey calf, calf raise, Eeyore. I don't think I need to worry too much about blurring out the calf detail. I'd rather they just look fucking big on stage, to be honest. <clears throat> Not that they particularly get judged. <clears throat> but who wants small calves? Well, apparently a lot of people, because nobody has calves. But I'll get into that in a second, why people don't have calves. No, fuck it, we're talking about it now. People don't have calves because they don't train them like they want other things. If there's a muscle group that you enjoy training and you want, say like biceps, you see plenty of dudes that have no leg development, but they have big arms. It's because they have specified training that muscle group. They might train it fresh when they go into a gym. They'll train it harder because they want it more than anything else. And they'll train it more frequently and more volume. And the opposite is true for calves. That's why people don't have them. Leaning on the genetic thing is for a minority of people. I am not genetically gifted in the calf department. They literally used to be straight up and down. The insertion is short, so they insert like really high up. But still, there's something there. Because <laughs> I've trained them pretty hard for years. I used to for a long run of time, and I, I still will from time to time, train them at the start of a leg session because they don't, it doesn't take a lot away from the leg session, but it gives a lot to the calves. And when you train them at the start, you learn how to train them truly hard. If you always train them at the end, you always train them when your energy's impacted, you've done a full leg day, and you never actually learn how to truly train them hard and mentally get into training them hard. When you do a run of training them first, you can train them at the end because you've conditioned yourself like, I know how to train these hard. And you would have built up some musculature and a good connection with the calves. So you can get calves. Okay, and then moving into calf training as well. Treat it like a whole new session. It's a part of the leg session that we're doing, but it's very different musculature. We've not really, when we've been doing compounds, leg presses, isolation movements, we've not been hitting the calves. So people that come to calves at the end, they do one warm-up set or no warm-up sets, wash out two to three sets, half fast. They've hardly even started getting into calves. They've hardly even started warming them up, driving any blood in there, getting their mind into it. So I'm gonna bare minimum do two warm-up sets and three working sets or maybe three warm-up sets before three proper working sets when my head's in the game and this is separate from all of the leg work that I've just done. Ooh. Seventh exercise, rope crunch. So this is my staple go-to ab exercise. So some ab machines and some ab exercises, they don't emphasize the full range of motion of elongating and stretching your abs and opening it up and crunching in and really shortening. Pretty much all of them crunch in and shorten focus on that element, but the opening up is important. For me personally, my abs cramp up if I'm not opening them up and stretching them when I'm training them. If I just shorten, 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 they get tight and they cramp up. So you'll see the way I'm doing this, that I really emphasize opening, stretching. And we've got to think about the functionality of the abs. Obviously, core stability, but rib cage to pelvis. So that's what we're thinking when we're doing it. Rib cage pelvis 
And flexion in the back is fine. I think it feels unnatural for people because say you do something like a deadlift and you never want to open up your spine and flex it. But it's not under load here. Your spine isn't under load. The load is on the abs and a functionality of your spine is to have that option to flex when it needs to, to use the abs. So it's not a bad thing, even though it may feel unnatural. It feels unnatural for a lot of people that I train with and they don't know how to do a rope crunch. They're like, they can't get it. But really emphasize crunching in, flexing the spine, and then reversing that, opening up, stretching. Really like feeling either end of that range of motion. Shortening, lengthening, shortening, lengthening. Oh, okay, so you can see when I'm doing that movement as well, the habit, a bad habit people get into is their upper leg and the hips shifts so they like sit down on it and they never really feel it in their abs because a lot of the movement is just them shifting back and forward with the hips. So you want to find that position away from the cable and you actually want to use, people use too little weight so then the weight of their body gets them to fall over. So that's why they can't come away from the machine so much because they fall into it. So you're actually probably, you're gonna use a heavier weight than you'd anticipate you'd use on this machine, on this exercise. So just make sure that keeps locked there and it's all in the abs like I've just demonstrated. Typical rep range is going to be 20 to 25. People have this misconception that training abs will make them blocky. I don't think that it will. Just train them with higher reps, higher sets. And then in between as well, you can even practice doing volumes to get on top of waist control. So pulling your waist in in between sets really gives you that mind to muscle connection for the abs and teaming that ab training and the vacuums. It will give you better waist control and develop your abs as well. Part of having abs isn't just low body fat, it's actual development. If you don't develop the abs and have the musculature there, they're gonna look shallow because there's no physical shape to the abs. Okay, that is legs done. Two to three reps in reserve here at Shreds. Um, always a good place to get the job done. Really good atmosphere, really good equipment. It was hard. Um, but it was good, feel good after that. Obviously reps in reserve because I'm hoping to, yeah, competing again soon. Um, this was never a part of the plan. The reason I've done this is because I had some personal things going on in my life and not the ideal or chosen reason to throw yourself into a prep is when you've got something going on or your head's not right but my thing was right I've got this thing going on I just want to throw myself into something 
I want something to be so hard that it takes away from the anxiety and the stress and the way this thing was um, getting me down. And yeah, maybe an unhealthy coping mechanism, but I'm hoping I'll come out the other side and um, feel a lot better after it. It's been a real short time frame to try and get to the place I want to get to. But like I say, I've just gone super aggressive on it. Food has dropped so aggressively, instant output increases. And we'll see what happens when I, when I get on those stages again. Hopefully I'll get some good results. Hopefully I'll come out the other side better off for it. I feel at this moment in time better off, but because because it's uh, looming, getting close to when I want to go again on stage. I always get a bit sort of edgy and anxious around that time because I want to compete at a high level. I want to do well. So now there's new anxiety over that. <laughs> but hopefully I do well. It all goes well. Get the shows done. And then I'm back on. I'll be back into an off season. But... Yeah, it's, it's been a crazy thing to try and do this, but I decided, and once you make a decision, you fucking stick to it. And that's what I've done. So I'm gonna see it through. I'm gonna get these shows done. And um, hopefully come out the other side better off. And that's what it's all about. Challenge yourself, throw yourself into something, stick to your word. If you say you're gonna do something, then do it because there's a lot of people that doesn't have to be competing. General sort of clients, lifestyle clients, whatever. Everybody gets motivated, gets excitable for a very short amount of time, but they can't stick to it when things get hard. And this has been like the hardest thing I've ever done because of the less than ideal circumstances, a short time frame but it's just shown me and hopefully I can show to other people. When you put your mind to something and you have that accountability on yourself, like you can make it happen. For me, everything that I do is a testament to my character. If I slip up on the plan, if I don't get a training session in, if I don't get the cardio in, that's just showing that I'm not about what I say I'm about and I want to be a high level sort of bodybuilder. So if I fail on those things that I say I'm going to do, I don't really want it bad enough. And if you have goals and you are having someone help you and you do not do what you need to do and what is instructed on the plans, you just, you don't want that bad enough. And you can feel sorry for yourself, but Feeling for sorry for yourself does not achieve anything. You have to harden up and be like, I have this goal. I am gonna do what it takes to get to that goal. So I hope this can help people. I hope what I do and get done, uh, this Mission Impossible prep, Mission Impossible death prep, suicide prep. I hope it serves as some sort of inspiration um, to help people with their own goals and that's it we are done i am out let's see what happens over the next few weeks and um stay tuned